Scotland is an amazing country to visit. There are a couple of things that are handy to know before you go here. Tip number one, consider the local alternative. There's plenty of touristy things to do, but they can add up to a lot of money. Now here in Scotland, it seems that there's always, or well, not always, but a lot of times there's like a local alternative available for a fraction of the cost. For example, uh, the famous Harry Potter train, which is a steam train leaving from Fort William and then going to the uh, viaduct, the Glenfinian viaduct. Um, it takes 39 pounds for a single ticket uh, for an adult return ticket uh, and you have to book at least a week or perhaps even two or three weeks in advance and it only leaves twice a day. If you don't want that hassle there is a local alternative. You can take a local Scotrail uh, train and it takes just a fraction of the price and it does the same track. Same views, well mine is the smoke of course and the whole steam train experience but that might be an option for you. Uh, another example is taking a boat to spot dolphins or go somewhere or you could take the local ferry. I took a local ferry to an island, it only cost five pounds for a return and I still got to see some dolphins in the ocean, took a walk and took the ferry back. So tip number one, consider a local alternative. Tip number two, go take a hike. No really, take a hike. In just a couple of minutes of walking, all of a sudden you'll see why Scotland is such an amazing country to visit. The views, the nature, it's very inspiring. So take a hike uh, and in order to know where to hike, I would recommend you go to a local tourist information, the um, uh, Purple Eyes. What they have are these free booklets um, that have like hikes in the area. It shows you a map of the local area with the hikes they have on that flyer. You can see some pictures, you can see where the hikes are uh, and they also describe how long it will take you to walk them and how difficult they are, how strenuous they are. Really good stuff to know and they're beautiful hikes ranging from like half an hour all the way up to three and a half to four hour hikes. If you're into tourist information anyway, might as well grab one of these free ones. It's a free map of Scotland and it doesn't have any commercial stuff on it, which is quite unique. Um, it also shows you like the tourist routes or the nice beautiful roads to drive on. It doesn't have all the beautiful roads on them because a lot of roads here in Scotland are beautiful to ride on, uh, but it does give you a nice indication and it's always handy to have a bit of a map on where is what. If you want to know more of attractions or more things to do than even the tourist information you can tell you, uh, I would recommend you have a look at this book. It's called Wild Scotland and even locals use it. It's a beautiful book with great pictures of what to do and where to go in Scotland. It, may, mainly, it mainly focuses on uh, places where you can, for example, go hike or go swim or relax or en enjoy nature. But there's also the more tourist things, but also hidden tourist things. Small recommendations on accommodation and eating and food, but really inspiring stuff. This is kind of like I always wished a travel book would look like. And if you're even more adventurous, I can <laughs> recommend you this book. It's called the Bothy Bible. I never knew what Bothy was, but apparently Bothies are the sheds where you can stay in to overnight. They're from the olden days when they did multi-day walking. They had to travel by, by foot and they needed a shelter from all the weather here in Scotland. You can stay in one of these Bothies. Um, and you can still use these today for free. Um, now these bathies though, uh, they are very basic as in no water, no electricity, no toilets, no nothing. It's just shelter from the elements. There are exceptions. There are bathies with uh, certain th facilities, but that's all in this book. It's got the GPS location, a little map, a description, pictures, the facilities they have. If you're the adventurous type, have a look at the bathy uh, Bible. So that's tip number two, go for a hike. Tip number three is get your own transportation, especially if you want to go out in nature and go for hikes. Having your own transportation really cuts down on your travel time and hassle. Uh, go for a bike, bicycle or a motorcycle or rent a car, whatever you like. Um, if you rent a car, by the way, I have tip number uh, four for you is you might want to rent a car, not in Scotland, but just across the border in England. Due to demand, I wanted to look for a car here in Glasgow or in Edinburgh, uh, but it was really expensive, so I thought I'd have a look just across the border in Newcastle. And I found rental cars uh, less than half the price of what they are here in Glasgow or in Edinburgh. 
And for me, that was worth taking to drive from Newcastle up to Scotland. So it might be worth it renting a car in Newcastle instead of in Scotland. Tip number five, where are we at? Oh yeah, when you go driving, uh, please uh, realize that the driving will take you much longer than you think it would. Uh, you see a distance on the map, you think, ah, that's doable. But then you start driving, and especially if you're not used to all these wind, windy and twisty roads, uh, it's going to take you a much longer time. There's single tracks, so you have to wait for traffic. There's tourists like me that take more time and stop for pictures. You really have to take your time and it's really tiresome when you're driving here. It's inspiring, it's great to do, but it also takes you a bit more time. So please keep that into account uh, when you go driving. Tip number six, when you're driving, fill up on petrol or on gas when you can. Some places have plenty of petrol stations, but there's certain areas in Scotland, for example, the middle part on the map uh, and the total northwest or the uh, south west, yeah, south tip points, uh, their petrol stations can be few and far in between. I've seen places where they even had a sign when I finally found a gas station that has sign up, sorry, no petrol until Wednesday, and then you're kind of stuck. So you do want to fill up when you can. Tip number seven, the remote areas are really remote. Sounds like an open door, but it is really true. I found a great place to stay and stay there for a couple of days, but then found that within like a couple of days, I've seen the things I wanted to see. And then all of a sudden, leaving that area took at least an hour and a half of, well, intense driving to even get out of there. So the remote things are, they are really quite remote. Tip number eight, uh, book accommodation well ahead of time. Due to popular demand, um, Scotland is really popular for tourists and there's not enough hotels to go around. So prices go up and there's hardly stuff available if you book late. You can look on Airbnb stuff, but you'll find exactly the same thing. So accommodation, you really do have to plan ahead and book ahead. Apparently, thanks to movies and TV shows, lots more people know where to find Scotland and want to go there on holiday. So book ahead your accommodation. Tip number nine, um, is it expensive Scotland? You always hear, oh, Scotland is expensive. Well, is it? Well, it depends. It depends on what you compare it to. Accommodation, yeah, I found that to be expensive. Everything else comparable to Europe. Really depends on how much the pound is trading at now, nowadays and how the euro or the dollar is performing. But for, well, the Europeans right now, it's about the same. It's not that bad, really. Uh, it's the same or some things are even cheaper here in Scotland. So that's money. Uh, talking about money, uh, tip number 10, Scotland has its own currency or does it? Well, they print their own money, but it's exactly the same as the British pound. Well, they look different, but the dominations are the same. The value is the same. You can pay with British pounds in Scotland. It's no problem. You can mix them around. It doesn't matter. So yeah, they print their own notes, but in practice, it doesn't really matter for us as a tourist. And by the way, you can use your debit card almost everywhere here in Scotland, at least European credit cards. I don't know about American credit cards or debit cards, but debit cards from Europe, accessible everywhere here in Scotland. Tip number 10, uh, the prices here are including tax. They're tax included, but they don't include a tip and they do, yeah, well, they don't expect tips, but they do like tips like every other country, but it's quite normal to tip a little bit here in Scotland. So if you feel like it, uh, tip when necessary. That's tip number 11, I think. Uh, tip number 12, when you go for a hike, be sure to wear the right uh, footwear. Good shoes with some nice grippy profile. Because when you go for a hike, uh, there's gravel, there's uneven, there's, there's muddy stuff. So having good shoes really helps you uh, to hike. Wear the right clothes, uh, preferably a couple of layers. Because in Scotland, in one hike, you can probably encounter three seasons, uh, wetness, coldness, and wind and sunshine. Uh, so you need to be able to take stuff off and weatherproof you yourself a little bit. And thirdly, when you go for a hike, please wear bug repellent because they have midges here. Midges you, midges, you ask? They're like the evil or, or the eviler twin of the mosquito. They're silent, they're tiny, and they sting and they come in groups. So all of a sudden, a swarm of little black dots and, and they bite like mosquitoes. They're terrible, terrible things. Uh, so use uh, bug repellent or have a look at a website where they track um, how, 
how, how dense the population of midges is in a certain area so you know how much to cover yourself up or don't even bother going there. So when you go for hike, be prepared. Um, let's see, tip number 13, a castle. If you see a sign saying castle that way, a castle could be a castle, it could be a ruin, or it could be a stack of stones. Really, it can be a stack of stones and it will have a sign saying castle. It'll be a beautiful stack of stones and there'll be a story and there'll be history and there'll be relevance with the stack of stones because everything in Scotland has history and a story and relevance, uh, but it can be a castle and a stack of stones. Language is a little different than I expected. So the castle castle thing, uh, things like a loch, I always thought a loch was a lake, but apparently a loch can also be like an inlet of the ocean. So it could be salt water, it could be sweet water. So there are interesting nuances in language here. Um, but the castles, the, the tip I really wanted to give you is that you can visit a castle or some castles you can visit after opening hours. Like the famous big ca uh, castles, it's like nine to five usually, like their opening times. Uh, but if you don't want or have to see the inside of the castle, you could also show up before or after opening hours and you can probably park your car for free and just walk around the castle outside of it. Not inside, but outside of the castle. That is one of the things I visited a couple of castles and took quite nice pictures of like sunset and a castle or a sunrise and a castle and it skipped lines, it skipped tourism. So yeah, visit a castle after opening hours. And 14, the last tip I'm going to give you here uh, is please download your navigation and your maps on your phone before you go to Scotland. Wi-Fi isn't everywhere and isn't always that quick and cell phone coverage sometimes is and sometimes isn't. There's plenty of places here in Scotland where there's absolutely no coverage. I've seen uh, the E for edge networks and I've even seen places where the only thing I could get was GPRS and that was all of the island GPRS only. So navigation is going to be quite hard. So download your stuff, your entertainment, your music, your maps before you go to Scotland does help a little bit. Hey, these are at least 14 tips I wanted to give you before you go to Scotland. If you have any improvements, even better recommendations or questions, put them in the comments below, of course. Um, happy travels, happy travels. I hope to see you somewhere here in Scotland. Bye.